Hi there, this is Cindy Lee with CHRO Partners, and I'm joined by Adrian Court today. I'm going to have Adrian introduce herself, and we're going to talk about what it takes to um, go IPO, and, and specifically in the human capital HR function. So, um, Adrian, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself um, today, as well as a little bit about your background. Great, great. Well, Cindy, so nice to see you. Um, thank you for inviting me. This is a kind of a fun topic. Um, but first, yeah, I'm Adrienne Court, and I um, fell into HR years ago. I now say 25 years plus, so I don't add to that anymore. I just say 25 <laughs> years plus in human resources. Um, and most recently, I'm the CHRO for Telium, which is a consumer data platform. We have, uh, we're in about, our employees are in about 20 countries with customers in about 30. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but prior to that, I was with a company called Alchemy uh, for nearly five years and we bought public in April of 2021. So I know that'll probably be the most interesting uh, element of our discussion today, but I have worked in both uh, private equity and public companies um, with a majority of uh, private equity. Um, but look forward to sharing more and um, insights into bringing a company public, both preparing for it and after after the aftermath of it as well. Well, awesome. Um, I know you guys were one of the first companies after the pandemic that actually rang the bell live, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had our masks on. Um, it was kind of a, a fun story. Not a fun story, but it was quite remarkable to be in New York City at the tail end of the pandemic. Everything was still uh, relatively shut down. We were one of the first companies to actually go there and physically not ring the bell, but hit the button. Um, and um, so we had our masks on, but it was fun. We were able to take our masks off and take some pictures. Um, but we were very inclusive because uh, a lot of employees couldn't travel and it had to be very selective. Um, it was uh, NASDAQ is right down at Times Square. So we rented at the time, it was very, we rented all of the, the billboards. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to stream Alchemy and all of our um, team photos, mm -hmm. so employees could actually see their their photos up. So they could they were live showing their photos, and we were you know streaming their photos, so they felt like they could be part of it. It was really fun. I love that. Um, wow, what a creative idea! Yeah. All right. So I, I know you as like the fast growth CHRO or CPO, right? Like all the companies that you joined have just grown so rapidly and I'm sure that has to do with the people. Um, but I know that there's parts of going public that are just hairy, just yes. crazy hairy. And so um, I thought if you could walk us through a high level, I think there's five points that you wanted to share. Let's do a quick, quick lightning round through those. And then I'd love to dig into two of them that I think that based on our discussion are like the sort of the biggest um, areas that might be a surprise for right. CHROs if you haven't gone public or maybe the biggest lift from a, you know, expense perspective too. Right, right. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I did share with you kind of five areas. Let me walk through them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as you mentioned, we'll kind of dig into, you know, ones that may be most interesting either to me or to you or what mm -hmm. we think. But as we certainly people can reach out, those who are preparing or considering it. Um, so, I actually see as a CHRO today, as many people are probably saying like, oh, we want to be strategic CHROs or strategic people leaders, certainly. But the level of admin, compliance, regulatory, and all things in our lives are elevating and escalating. So that's becoming a much uh, a considerable element of our roles. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can deny that. Mm -hmm. um, everything from wage transparency to, I mean, you just leave, I mean, you could just go on and on and on and on about of all the things that are transpiring, not only in the US, but if you're a global company, touching on all the different countries and things. So, mm -hmm. but what I'm going to say, and we'll dig into that a little bit more, compliance and regulatory, okay. not only is that important, it gets completely escalated um, and it's a area that you have to focus on well in advance, a year plus. Okay. Um, then with that is disclosure and transparency. Mm -hmm. um, I talk a little bit about that. One of my points about culture is um, as you become a public company, you have to disclose all these things. You have to be very transparent. You're going to see uh, employees are going to see things like executive comp, board comp, all those kind of things. So having a uh, being prepared that those things are going to be disclosed and understanding what that means to the organization and maybe setting a culture in advance uh, for that so people are prepared. Um, 
talent retention is going to be a big thing. It always is. Um, even in Dell markets, we think about how we retain and engage our, you know, our top talent. Um, in particular, a IPO event creates interest in your talent mm -hmm. um, because others want like, well, that's a special thing. Were you a special person that helped create that? Or have you been part of that and you understand the heavy list it takes? So you're, you need to think about talent retention strategies because you your talent will be targeted. Mm -hmm. um, equity compensation is a, um, a big element of uh, an IPO or any, you know, kind of company going public. Um, and so you're going to have to prepare your strategy around your equity compensation and then also level set too. Um, and we could talk a little bit more about that because just because you go public and all of a sudden it's this doesn't mean that everybody can sell uh, immediately. Right. Um, and then um, as I kind of mentioned, um, governance and corporate culture, right? Your culture is going is very important and that's going to become micro uh, micro watched once mm -hmm. you become public. And you've all seen, you know, great companies that are out there publicly, but then you've also seen supposedly great companies. And then you learn about what their CEOs or others and things are doing and that impact to the stock price, the value, your employees, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, your culture and the governance around that is a super uh, important element. So those are kind of the five, I think, areas that I think are important as you prepare or consider an IPO. Yeah. For for you um, and what you think other HR leaders, um, where, are the, where are the two heavy lifts, would you say, these five topics? Um, compliance and regulatory. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Every process you have must be documented. Mm -hmm. And then it needs to be uh, producible. Meaning if I have a documented process that says, this is how someone is um, incented or earns a bonus, this is how they are paid. This is how it is approved. Mm -hmm. We have that process documented. We have all the policies related to that. And then your internal and external audit is going to make sure you're actually following those things. Mm -hmm. um, and this gets, it, it is a significant and onerous process of documenting all your uh, policies and processes. Some um, industries and groups are already fairly regulated like mortgage i worked in mortgage that's already that's fairly regulated it's already part of who they are but for a lot of companies um or particularly fast growth high-tech companies that's not necessarily first in your nature so you have, they acquired a bunch of companies along the way and everybody's yeah, got their yeah, everybody doing things differently mm -hmm. and the other thing is which i tend to be like one like i just want to get stuff done and get it over the line it's it's not just you. You have to get a finance, accounting, legal, compliance, information security, all these um, uh, compliance and regulatory matters touch every one of those elements. Mm -hmm. uh, product. I mean, there's just so many. So I will not underestimate uh, the level of tedious tediousness. Uh, the level of importance this mm -hmm. is, and once you become public then all these things are even escalated through like SEC and other regulatory things that ensure that you are meeting within or above those standards. Um, and then all encompassing in that is your code of ethics and business conduct. If you don't have one of those purely articulated, that's probably going to be the first thing that's going to occur. I would expect if you're preparing your legal or mm -hmm. um, uh, compliance team has already helped do that, um, but that's a very important element. There has to be a, a clearly articulate, articulated way that employees or others can uh, submit concerns or complaints, and both a um, within this uh, within your company as well as anonymously how that can be done, um, and then uh, an attestation process to your policies, um, annual, quarterly. There's a lot. Um, so for all of us who said we want to seat at the table and we want to be strategic, um, that is a strategic element. It's just a very uh, um, tedious and administrative strategic element of your role. So I not don't negotiable. underestimate that in any shape or form. So can you walk us through an example of like something that you had to put in place that um, maybe wasn't there before? And then like, how did the auditors check to see if you were doing it right? So um, let's say hiring somebody. Okay. Okay. So um, 
let's say a manager likes somebody and it generally fit in the compensation and we had a approved rec and um, we would just approve it. Or maybe I'd approve it. Or maybe the VP would approve it or whatever. Okay. You know, like, oh, okay, we hired someone. Mm -hmm. Now you have to, one, it's a, very, it's a financial impact to the organization. So anything that has a uh, financial impact or a regulatory concern, it has to be documented, have a policy, a documented policy and a documented process that is auditable. So for example, if let's say it's a hiring practice, we're gonna say how that hiring practice happens, how the compensation is determined, who approves it and how that happens. And you're gonna have a process for that. Then it is gonna be audited. So, and it will be, for example, your external, your internal audits will do it first to make mm -hmm. sure you're following and then your external audit, but they could randomly pick 25 people that were hired in the last six months, any random six, any mm -hmm. random 25. And they're going to ask you to pull all the doc documentation or reporting that supports that you followed that exact process and have all those approvals in wow. line. And- Let's say you have 24 of them and one of them did not follow that process. Mm -hmm. You now are show that you have a deficiency and you're going to have to correct that uh, uh, efficiency. And the next time they're going to pull it, they're going to look, have you met? So you don't have that deficiency. If you've cleared it, it's fine. If it's another deficiency, now it starts to become a area where it has to go to your, um, your um, a board, I mean, and it's elevated to a very significant level. So that's to the extent that I'm trying to share that this is not like, oh, simple. Um, in fact, I've found like, let's say the CEO says, hey, the board approved this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I need an email for the board that said they approved that, or we can't make the compensation change, or we can't make that adjustment. Everything's got to be documented. Everything's got to be documented. Interesting. So um the uh the the guide like who helped guide you through this is the level of detail that you need to go into like did you have to hire external consultants did you have to hire somebody internally that had been through this before how did you know what to do well there's so first thing is um for us and working so it's a cross-functional team mm -hmm. and usually there will be an external consultant of some sort okay. um external auditor or some sort of that generally give you, these are the, the things that are most critical in terms of all our, and by the way, I'm just touching on a HR. There's like information secure. I mean, there each group, every group has these right. things. So I'm just talking on the HR mm -hmm. element of it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then you, when you start out, it's like, okay, we want to hiring practices, firing practices, whatever, the, right. all the different things. Once you have that list of things, you then go and identify, do we have a policy? Do we have a process? What is our practice? And you must then start documenting these or defining where you can find these. Um, some people, well, I have a handbook. A handbook is generally not, that might be the beginning of the of the process, beginning like, oh, we have a whatever, mm -hmm. a, whatever, we have a leave administration mm -hmm. uh, policy, what you, what you're eligible on, you know, PTO, et cetera. But then you're going to have to have what is the process? How does someone get approved for a leave? Mm -hmm. Where is that documented? And you actually have to outline those processes. Like so governance, governance on steroids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so did you find efficiencies? I mean, because you had to go through this process. Yeah, you know, you because convince. you're preparing in advance. You're usually like we prepared almost two years in advance at Alchemy you're starting to find these deficiencies and correcting them internally first. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's look at what your policy is or your process is now. Mm -hmm. Are you following us? Hey, I see a gap or hey, we okay, let's start cleaning them up. Let's start mm -hmm. documenting. And so you're, you know, you're kind of going through all this and then you're auditing them for accuracy to the point where now you you probably got a pretty good process. Mm -hmm. um, then to the point of, okay, now they're going to bring in internal auditors or, how are we functioning? You know, I mean, external mm -hmm. auditors. So it's kind of a step process. You start with the fundamentals. What do you have? Build upon that, test it, where are your deficiencies, clean it up, or 
maybe the process you have documented doesn't actually represent the reality. So you have to change your documented process mm -hmm. to mirror the reality. Right. Um, so if you have something that says the CEO approves all uh, director and above compensation. Does that really happen? Right. Does that really happen? Right. Okay. And so like you guys had about 600 employees when you went public. Yes. Uh -huh. Really lean HR team. Like you said, around. Yeah, I think I can't remember, maybe 18, right. 20, but that would have included the whole team. So that would have been our uh, recruiting team, our comp and benefits team, our HR business partners, our learning and development. I mean, that would have been the whole the whole group. Right. Um, now, we were fortunate. I mean, I will say this. Um, Alchemy was a U.S. based company. So that uh, leans to a little, um, excuse me, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. from an HR perspective, sure. um, ensuring that you actually have policies. So you got to keep in mind, these policies of practice also have to be legally, like I can't make up a some quirky thing that doesn't relate to uh, legal requirements too. Right, so right. That's what I mean, it's that whole cross-functional thing. So it does get a little bit more um, complex when you have... Um, operations or employees in other countries. Yeah, I bet. Well, and even if like you're a government contractor, right, then OFC, you have to be oh, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as for this, okay. But, and then like, we're a data, Telium's mm -hmm. a data company. So we're like, you wouldn't even like, people go like, one of the biggest compliance rules we have is HIPAA. And you're like HIPAA, like, but all the companies use data and it has to comply with HIPAA. I mean, you just keep going on and on and on. And, yeah, so. So even though like I, I um, you know, worked in very entrepreneurial type of environments, I have to imagine that this kind of discipline though around governance, like makes it easier for you guys to make decisions, even if you don't go public, right? I mean, and maybe it's- It certainly overkill. does. Right. Um, however, you know, there's that fine balance. So, you know, and that's a real big shift. Um, truthfully, Cindy, is a lot of times- you know, the companies that are think, considering IPO are probably somewhere between 15 to 10 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're still not far away from your uh, entrepreneurial spirit and heritage where everybody just kind of did things and it just happened. Right, right. Now um, we have to kind of follow these things. So you kind of been this high growth, kind of maturing level experience. And so you have to bring in people that balance you. Because, you know, I have to say I'm pretty much a go person, too. So I have to have that balance mm -hmm. um, of, you know, someone like you can't be just do it. You have to, like, do it within the framework of things you've established. So right. A lot of details, too. Did you have to increase your team substantially or, or get? We didn't. Uh, and I know some do. Um, I have to say from an internal and an external audit issue. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really add team members. Um for this but i did kind of assign like team members okay your role is going to be really helping to document the policies mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you're going to spend a lot of time on that and then we're all going to help you know fill it in right but we didn't add a lot now i, I we also took uh, at alchemy we kind of did things in a very methodical way mm -hmm. so um you didn't have this we're going to go in a year if right. we Basically, from the moment I joined Alchemy, we knew this was going to be something in sure. the longer term horizon. So we were a little bit more methodical yeah. preparing for it. Go ahead and get set up like you're one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I remember some of our startups, um, our boards were like, look, we're going to go ahead and hire an audit firm that yeah. is going to be okay. I mean, like that the street will be okay with or. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Audit. I mean, audit is like the first and a board, your audit committee chair. I mean, like all those things are like so important yeah so it sounds like compliance and regulatory is a big one yeah, what's yeah. the second one that you would say is uh is a big heavy lift um compensation mm -hmm. um executive and board comp is yeah. is very important people you know you kind of yeah yeah but um there are certain things you need to follow um mm -hmm. you know certain re regulations and guidance around comp um you you'll need to partner with a um comp firm like a compensia or pay governance or mercy there's mm -hmm. many great ones 
in advance of that. You'll need to select your comparator or peer companies that you compare your compensation to. So there's a little work around that because you'll mm -hmm. your company versus other companies because that's very important to you uh, in terms of decision making. And then um, all elements of base, cash, and equity. Equity becomes also a significant discussion, important element of compensation, certainly prior to and then after. Mm -hmm. um, stock options, RSUs, what other incentive programs, um, stock purchase programs, all of those things you need to think about because um, when people are working for companies that are pre-RPO and have gone public, um, you have to think about ways where hopefully most of the team members can participate. Mm -hmm. In many respects, um, uh, you can't always just continue to give out stock options or RSUs to all team members. So you have to think of what are ways that people feel that they're participating. So like a stock purchase plan, um, which is a nice little benefit people buy, but you get it at a discount and there's a whole um, process mm -hmm. around that. I think those are super important. I think the other thing too is along with the compensation is once you go IPO, um, your team is many team members are on the hit list for others to try to recruit. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So um, everyone from your, you know, your CHRO, your CFO, your, you know, mm -hmm. multiple people, and even kind of the next tiers, having been through that. Uh, and organizations that are considering that now are going to target you to come to their company, particularly ones that, you know, have su success or known for success. So yeah. um, you're going to have to think about uh, ways of retention. Again, that could, most likely cash comp is important, but equity is important. The other thing around um, equity compensation, which a lot of people don't think about, mm -hmm. is um, while the, the company goes public and it's XYZ strike price, most people can't sell um, that work for the company. There's blackout periods. Many times it could be four to six months before you would even have an opportunity to sell because you know there's that kind of crazy bump and they want it to settle out. They don't want any kind of insider manipulation. And then ongoing from there, after typically there's blockouts um, before and after the end of the quarter, uh, there'll be, uh, sorry, blackouts, there'll be blackout periods if there's any kind of event, such as let's say you're considering an acquisition or a big change with customers, or let's say you have a compliance issue, uh, all that uh, may put you in a blackout period. So I just want everyone to be thoughtful that it's not like everyone go up, like, you know, it, it, that doesn't happen automatically. Um, you have to kind of work through it a little bit um, and stick through it. Mm -hmm. um, in order to actually see real, really any significant gain um, from that transaction. What's all that work look like for the HR team as you're going through, you know, because you have So the comp piece, executive, board comp, equity comp, uh, particularly I'd say six months up before and those six months after, it, it's a big part of your job. Mm -hmm. It just is. It's a significant communicating how you're not only like setting these programs, but then communicating to your team members so they understand. Mm -hmm. um, your HR team. Feel, yep. And then you have to work with your legal and finance mm -hmm. accounting teams on your equity. Ma your, we all, we all, there's tools mm -hmm. that um, you manage your equity programs in and, oh, excuse me, and your cells and your blackout period, all that. So it's a lot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I imagine that your team is just fielding questions nonstop. What does this mean? Yeah. For, right. And you would be surprised. Like you probably communicate it four different ways, email, Slack, a couple lessons learned, you know, a video, mm -hmm. and then people still don't understand it. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and then you'll see other employees try to like, oh, this is how it works. No, no, that's not how it works. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, That's and then there's lots of tax implications. Mm -hmm. Then for a company, we say like, it's your responsibility, but you do try to help educate people on tax consequences and things, uh, depending on the type of equity, mm -hmm. when, how long you hold, when you sell. Um, 
yeah, there's just it's a lot of communication. I think uh, from a CHR perspective, like I said, compliance, comp, the communication piece is really important. If you don't, like I actually enjoy communications and think a lot about it. And mm -hmm. so really thought a lot about how are we going to communicate these things in advance, during, right. after. Mm -hmm. But if you are not that person, make sure you have somebody on your team who thinks about that. Yeah. What about the board? You mentioned board compensation too. Were you involved in that piece of it? and Every element of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing, uh, board comp, you have to do competitive analysis. Um, and then a lot of times what will happen is you might have board members who joined um, as part of um, investment. It might have been a friend. I mean, there's lots of ways. So you have to start to level that out, mm -hmm. um, determine a comp by committee. So typically there'll be a... Um, what I'm saying, a, a general board uh, retainer, mm -hmm. whatever, 30,000 a year, whatever it is. And then for each committee, there'll be a different level of, uh, of retainer. Um, the chair will get something. So like, let's say the audit committee chair, that'll usually be the one that has the, the biggest little you know, retainer. And, and then those are on the audit committee, uh, compensation committee, the chair will get a certain, and then et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of comp uh, and then equity as well. And that too is very transparent and all in your filing. So, wow. Exactly and we have to show awesome. that uh, relative to, to uh, competitor or peer companies, which okay. is a list of about 15 or so competitor companies that you um, uh, compare uh, their comp to your comp. Public and, companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. I wonder if you're in a, space where you're carving out kind of a new category, how you would do, Can't that. do that. Yeah. You'll work comps. You'll have to find some sort of comparators. It's, it's not going to be, everybody mm -hmm. thinks they're special, by the way. Right. Um, <laughs> every company thinks they're special. Every executive, every entrepreneur particularly thinks that they're special. Uh -huh. And I agree, but um, there's all these rules and regulations that say you're not is actually that special and you need to compare to others. So uh, <laughs> yeah, and if your if your comp is significantly out of bounds one mm -hmm. way or the other, you'll just have to explain that in your filings. Okay. So we have a few more minutes, and there's something I forgot to ask you about, oh. and that is um, ESG. Like so much of the S, right, falls into the human capital and HR area. Um, how much of the ESG are you expected to sort of cover on day one? Or is it just like all this compliance stuff is overwhelming? I think that becomes a natural outcome of a lot of work that you're doing. Okay. I, I Just truth be told, um, I did not think of that as a separate um, component mm -hmm. or an element, I but see. rather it truly was an outcome of all the work that, that has been done. Makes sense. Especially on the governance side and on, on the S side, if you're focused on the the culture piece yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you well, do have to prepare, like, what are all the things that relate to that? And, you know, like you you will be asked to um, uh, certainly help write and contribute to that. But I was thinking all these other things kind of just feed into it. Okay, so closing comments, you're known as sort of like the culture queen when it comes <laughs> to HR, creating amazing cultures. And so, you know, number five on your list was government, governance and corporate culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about um you knew coming in day one, right? So did that help knowing that you guys were going public to to help create that culture? Um or is did the culture you work you did did help with the culture piece? Perfect. Yeah, I think the culture work already it just it wasn't like done because we're going public. Right. It was what we did to make a very healthy growing company. Right. And then when you have a culture like that, then you don't have huge ethics yeah. concerns and, be, you know, behavior concerns. Certainly you always have it, but you don't have those huge elements happening. Uh, as I mentioned, um, transparency, accountability, kind of all those things within your culture are so so important mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to all these other elements we're doing. Um, so if you're a company that has not been transparent, 
Now you want to probably be a little bit more transparent of things, but then as you become public, you have to manage when that transparency happens. So for example, you might be a very transparent company about how you're doing with deals during the quarter, sharing, celebrating with your team members and all that kind of stuff. Well, when you become a public company, you have to be very careful. Like, is that public information? Is that only you have information? How is that going to impact the quarter? Mm -hmm. So, um, having that grounding that you know that you're going to be transparent, but then also let them know we're going to be accountable to all these things. So you might not find out at everything until we're publicly allowed to share with everybody. So there's lots of things, but building that trust and confidence and having a culture where you trust people um, helps in all that too. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Adrian, thank you so much. We've got compliance and regulatory requirements, disclosure, transparency, talent retention, equity, compensation, governance, and corporate culture. And so yeah. if there's anything we didn't go deep enough into and you're interested, we're going to drop uh, Adrian's uh, LinkedIn into the uh, the show notes. And she said, feel free to reach out. Yeah, so, great. Thank well, you so fun, much Cindy. for this. All right, take care. Take care.